We're really excited to be here with uh, James and Liz, and we're going to do some teachings uh, for about 20 minutes on um, the five-step prayer model and inner healing later. So um, this is a model that we at Abundant Life have adopted for praying for miracle healing. And James and Liz, I'll tell you a little story on them really quick, is that uh, when we started uh, mingling with the Global Awakening Ministry, sometimes you've got to send people in to spy out the land. So I said, hey, would you guys have any interest in taking a class and telling me how it goes? And after taking the class, I noticed they started coming back and having more accurate words of knowledge, and things were changing in their lives. And I said, well, if it's good for you, that's good for the rest of us, right? Yeah. And so that's where we learned the five-step prayer model. James, could you talk to us just a little bit about why the five-step prayer model as our model, Abundant Life's model, for going for miracle healing? So what, we, what it is is it's a track to run on, a, uh, a framework uh, where you can follow these steps, and if you don't know what to do, at least you you can start out. And if you follow these steps along the way, you're you're interviewing the person, you're talking to Holy Spirit, and as you do these steps, um, it turns out differently every time. And uh, and so the idea is that you have a model to go with. It's not a rule sheet. You always want to ask Holy Spirit, what, what are you wanting to do for this person? And um, so we've just found this model to be really effective. Especially, I would say, for training what we call the little old me. The, the healing movement in America in the early part of the 20th century was based on what we call the man of power for the hour on the stage, right? And that model worked, and a lot of people got healed. But what we see God doing today is empowering the little old me that's not ministering from a stage. And what the five-step prayer model does is it gives him a track to run on or her a track to run on to see people get healed. So that's kind of our goal with the five-step prayer model, right? Yeah. So uh, take us through it, and uh, take us through with um, what is the five-step prayer model. This is not... Uh, well, let's start with what it's not. It's not a, if you do these five things, somebody's going to get healed, right? That's right. <laughs> why, why is it not that? Well, because and I'm the per perfect person to teach this because I literally make my living by putting things in boxes <laughs> and, and coming up with a set of instructions that if you do A, B, and C, you're always going to get D. Mm -hmm. And the the reality of it is, is that God is sovereign and each situation is different and the Holy Spirit has an agenda and you may not realize it. And so uh, we're not up to 100% results on this. Yeah. So it's not a do these five steps and, and you're going to get healed. It is more of a guideline to help us hear the Holy Spirit. Would that be accurate? That's right. Okay. So take us through the guidelines that are going to help us hear the Holy Spirit. We believe the Holy Spirit is the key person that's going to bring the miracle healing in a person's life. Now, just for clarity, we're going for, in this case, this is a model where we're going for instantaneous physical miracle healing. That's you know, right. I've got a back problem. I've got a headache. I've got cancer. I've got uh, a physical healing, and that's what we're focusing on. So take us through the guide that's going to help us to hear the Holy Spirit. Sure. Well, real quickly, um, and I used to really, uh, I used to really stress about remembering these steps. And once you've done it for a little while, it's just so natural. Right. So don't worry about. Oh my gosh, I have to memorize five I, steps. I, I skip step number yeah. three. Oh my is gosh. the Lord still going to work? The yeah. Lord is still here. So um, uh, real quickly. Uh, first, just to go through them, there's an interview. There's two is prayer selection. Three is you pray. Four is you re-interview. And then five is you have some type of parting instructions. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. So the interview, you always want to introduce yourself. If it's not someone you know, 
hey, my name is James. What's your name? My name's Liz. So Liz, um, why did you come up? Why did you come up for prayer? What would you like God to do for you today? I have a headache. Okay, so uh, it's pretty simple, right? And um, uh, you'll want to note if the prayer was a response to a word of knowledge. Now, word of knowledge is something we could do a whole other message on, right? We're not going to get into depth here. Um, and when when you're interviewing the person, you always want to be internally asking Holy Spirit, you know, have your antenna up. Holy Spirit, what's going on here? You want to look at the person in the eye. You want to engage them, make them feel welcome, smile. Um, James, a lot of what you're describing is that at Abundant Life, we'll never judge you based on whether the person gets healed or not, only on whether you loved them well. Absolutely. And that's meant to take a lot of pressure off of me, because I'm not the one that can heal anybody anyways, what that does is it gets me thinking about, I have a person in front of me, not a project in front of me. That's and right. That's, that's pretty much what you're describing is, I'm, what's your name? Look them in the eye. Glad you're here. You know, to find out a little bit about them. You're, I'm talking to a person, not a project. That's right. You're not responsible for whether they get healed or not. You are responsible for whether or not they feel loved. Yes. There you go. Whether they feel loved. That's the key. They should, they should leave the encounter knowing somebody cared about them, listened to them, and tried to help them. Great. Great. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, so then there's going to be prayer selection. Um, and so that's when you kind of formulate a plan. What, what type of prayer do I want to do here? Or do I even want to pray? It, it depends. Um, uh, Real quickly, if, if in the process of talking to the person, they volunteer, you know, my brother is just driving me crazy. Well, you probably need to stop there and say, are you willing to forgive your brother? Okay? And if they say no, then, then you're done. Say, you know, uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe say, you know, if you're willing to forgive your brother, I think God wants to do something for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't want to block what God want, is wanting to do for us. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I do, tr- you rarely find someone who's unwilling. Mm-hmm. Usually they've, they've gone, they've taken the step of showing up at church or wherever. They've taken the step of going up for prayer. They want to get healed. Usually. So they're probably willing at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's been my experience too. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, so there's two broad classes of prayer. One, one is a, one is a petition and this is where most of us have learned to pray, Lord, if, if, if it's your will, please heal this person or Lord, please heal this person. And, and if you look at what Jesus said in the scripture, he didn't say pray for the sick. He said in in Matthew 10, he said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons, you received without paying, give without pay. So he's empowered us. It's not us doing it, but he's empowered us and he wants us to stand up and and do it. And so um, in general, I go for the command for 95% of my prayers. Mm. Um, and look for a quick result. So um, once you finish the prayer selection, and you don't want to take too long with this. Um, if you have, it kind of depends on the scenario. We have a healing room, which is a separate event, and, and there's more time. We, we usually get, put a 15-minute time limit on it. But a lot of times, if you only have five minutes, you're in a home group setting, uh, you can't pray for half an hour for each person, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You want to keep it to a few minutes. So so once you do the prayer selection, you want to um, get to praying, short, specific, commanding prayers, unless the Holy Spirit gives some other direction. You know, try to keep it to 30 seconds or so-ish, because uh, God's not going to do more work if you talk more. Mm -hmm. Um, And... 
my faith usually starts to drain if I keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. I learned. Yeah, kind of what you're describing is uh, we were when we were in the model of Lord, please heal this person if it be Thy will. We just ask that you'd come and fall on this person and heal this person. And you go, you drone on and on, and there's no faith in that. Well, what I've kind of learned is my petition prayers are often, "Come, Holy Spirit." Yes, that's my petition. I pray that a lot. Come, Holy Spirit, and give us your aid and your assistance. But then the commanding prayer, you know, let's say that you got a headache, right? How many ways can you command a headache to be healed? It, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that, so it shortens the whole deal. Yeah. So it's, it's, you lay the hands on, on, the, on, the, on the head or the neck or whatever it is. Headache, in the name of Jesus, we command you to leave right now. I mean, it, it, there's only so many ways you can go after that. You're commanding the issue to be removed. That's yeah. right. And when you're praying, there's a few things that are not traditional. Uh, the, fir the hardest one is keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, look at the person. I uh, usually, usually look at their face. And um, expect when you're praying, as you're looking at this person, expect Holy Spirit to give you impressions. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes a word will come to my mind. And I'll be like... Oh, and so I'll ask the person, hey, does this resonate with you? And I'll, and I'll ask them, and, and a lot of times they'll say, yeah. Like, uh, are you having a difficult relationship? And they'll say, oh, my goodness, my mother-in-law has been bothering me. And, um, and so it, it, it gives you then a direction. You can forgive the person or, um, or, or realize that maybe this stress backache they have is, is from stress at work, and maybe pray peace over that. Right. It, it, you know, it gives you direction. Um, so keep your eyes open. And here's the other thing is, you know, you know like Mark, uh, Mark 16, uh, the great commandment there says, you know, they'll, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. And the last one is they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So you always want to ask, even before COVID, you always want to ask permission before touching somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and usually I'll, usually I'll say, is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? Um, if it's someone of the opposite sex, Liz, will, I'll, Liz would, would do that. Um, sometimes you're in a prayer team with another person of the same gender. And so uh, sometimes I'll, I'll ask if it's, a, if it's a woman, I'll say, would it be okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? And that's about, and that's about all I'll do. Um, so you always want to ask first. Um, and so those are, any other fundamentals to the prayer step, honey? Number three? Okay. Um, so then the fourth step would be you want to stop and evaluate or re-interview. And, um, uh, and a few bullet points for that is, is, you know, like if it was a physical ailment, is there something you can do now that you couldn't do before? And they'll, you know, and so let's say they could only raise their hand this high. Well, can you raise your hand higher and let them test it out? Um, sometimes it's something that you can't test out. Like maybe they come, they want to be healed of diabetes. Well, you can't really test that out in your five minutes. And that kind of leads to another thing is one of the don'ts is we never tell somebody to stop taking their medication. That's something only their doctor should do. Um, and what we want to see happen is for the doctor to say, hey, this, this, this condition is gone. You, you should stop. You, do, you don't need to take this anymore or let's try and wean you. Um, but we don't ever tell somebody, don't take your medication. Yeah, just an example of that. We had a person that had a heart condition that, we, that was prayed for. And after they were prayed for, they went back to the doctor. And the doctor said, well, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it's working. So the surgery we said you needed, you don't need it anymore. So yeah, that, that was the, the doctor saying, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. We don't need to do what we were going to do anymore. Right. That's the, that's the doctor verifying the healing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, so a few other things you, you can ask. Um, does anything feel different? Do you feel any heat or cool or tingling? 
Um, one time I was being prayed for by a woman and her daughter, um, uh, Janine and Leah, in our church body here. And one of them, I felt heat on my shoulder, and the other one, I felt cool. Mm -hmm. yep. At the same time, it was, and they were both, the Holy Spirit was working. Yes. And uh, he brought a healing to me that day. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, and the purpose of re-interview is that we want to bless what Holy Spirit is doing. So I had one person I prayed for that came up for a hip problem. But as we prayed, there was a manifestation of heat in their back. So we're like, well, let's bless that. Yes. So we simply laid hands on the back, and God, I don't know, if for lack of better terms, he heated the whole section up and through the back healed the hip. So you, you want to, the purpose of the re-interview is to find out what God is doing. That's right. So we want to move on here. Um, I'll also ask, uh, if, is there improvement and you, can you quantify it? Is it 50% better? Is it 80% better? Um, is God showing you anything or saying something to you? Um, and then you want to stop these, this cycle of praying and interviewing um, either when the person says stop. Uh, one time Liz was praying for a woman. Why don't you tell it real quickly? Um, well, I pr actually prayed for her several times, and she only wanted prayer one cycle. Mm -hmm. And she would get partial healing, but she had been in a car accident, so there was a multiple healings that she needed, and she didn't want a re-prayer. That's it. I'm done. That's all I needed. Yes, I had partial healing. Uh, so if the person's done, then, then we're done. We want to honor the person. Mm -hmm. um, if they're 100% healed, obviously you're done. Uh, or if you don't see any improvement, then usually at that time, you, you bless the person, you, you move on. So this leads us to um, the fifth step, uh, final instructions or parting instructions. Um, if the person is not healed or they're struggling, you want to assure them that God cares for them. You want to encourage them to come another time for prayer. Uh, and you want to possibly encourage them to speak truth to their body and to themselves and to, and to worship. Um, if they're healed, we definitely want to clap our hands. Um, and that alerts other people who might be praying if you're in one of those situations that, hey, something's happened. Because um, one of our key jobs is to foster faith in the room. Because healing only happens when there's an atmosphere of faith. And whether it's the person coming or whether it's you, uh, it can come from all directions. Uh, if they're healed, you also want to ask them if they're willing to make a testimony video. Because the testimony prophesies the next healing. Um, it's not on you whether they're healed or not. It's on you whether they feel loved or not. Um, so, real quickly, um, why don't... Um, why don't you give that example of a time when we prayed for someone with this model, and then I'll give mine, okay? Um, like the woman I talked about, she had, was in a car accident, and it was, it was difficult for me because God kept bringing her to me to her prayer, but she only wanted to be prayed once. And so I blessed her each time when she said, I'm done. Um, he had... It was miraculous. At one point in time, I could actually see inside her hip to see what was wrong. And she was surprised because she didn't tell us everything. Well, then, after five or six times, she received a complete healing. It's You kind of have to forgive the person. Well, we could have gotten this done a year ago. But <laughs> that's okay. That's where they are. And that's all right. Love, accept, and forgive them. Um, but it was very exciting to see her completely healed mm. after all of our um, prayers. So another healing testimony uh, on our mission trip in, in Cuba last year. Um, Robert uh, Critton and I prayed for this little old lady who she was, had to be 80. She was um, had been a Sunday school teacher. She had cataracts and glaucoma in both eyes. And... Um, at first, I was like, oh, that's a hard one. But I was like, no, don't just be obedient. Just pray for her. And um, I put my hands on her eyes. We both prayed for her. I took my hand away just after one iteration. 
and she was completely healed. She opened up, her face lit up, she looked around, she said, I'm completely healed. This is great. Mm, that's awesome. That was just awesome. Yeah. And so I just want to reiterate the purpose of the five step model is not to give us a formula that is guaranteed to work, it is to empower the little old me that God can use me for miracle healing. Absolutely. You can do this. That, that's, that's the goal. Yes. So we want to encourage you. Uh, practice is how we learn. So if someone needs miracle healing in your small group, it's a good time to practice. Take us through just the five steps again. Start with a... Interview. Okay. Prayer selection. Pray. Evaluate re-interview. Loop if you need to. And then the fifth is parting instructions. Yeah. And... Uh, this works even in small groups. We had in our small group, we've been praying for people this way, and sometimes we've had to pray up to three times, but we did get the healing by doing it that way. That's awesome.